Ladies and gentlemen, impact of indifference, inconsistency, and indecisiveness is clearly present in the crisis we are facing at the southern border, borders of the EU. More and more we witness how instability spreads from post-conflict regions. The current, current wave of refugees from North Africa and Middle East demonstrates it. What once was a regional crisis has become a European problem and international responsibility. Europe is in desperate search for the principles and the rules how to face the immigration wave, how to help refugees, and at the same time, how to preserve our own security, how to stay devoted to our principles of humanism, how to deal with it economically, socially, and culturally, what we can handle and what may go over our limits. Every member state has its own hill to climb here, and Slovakia is no exception. We are not a country of entry of this massive wave of immigrants, and in fact, we have more or less zero experience with refugees. And yet, there are too many strong words and categorical statements in our domestic public discussion. It would be useful to calm down and let us all remember we are talking about human beings, women, children, and men, run, not running away from poverty, but from cruelty and murdering. We are, not, we are not only able to help refugees, but we have moral obligation to do so. There are no easy solutions. The reallocations of refugees across the member states or some sort of uh, similar decisions may cure the symptoms for a while, but it will not address the causes and can't handle the wave of economic immigrants. At the same time, it would be unfair to leave the solution to the most exposed states. And the same goes for the international community. It is a European problem today, but will become a global one tomorrow if we do not cooperate. All UN Security Council members must show responsibility. In the meantime, the most difficult part of our job is work with public opinion. Because if we do not explain why it is important to help those, those in a need, we will leave room for extremists to make their political case. As I mentioned this week elsewhere, uncertain times we are living now are the test of the limits of our pragmatism. They are a challenge to our cohesion and principles of the European Union is built on. But most of all, in many countries, including my own country, it is a battle for hearts, minds, and trust of people. Ladies and gentlemen, the future will depend on our ability to adapt to a new reality, not to long for good old times. This will require bold new decisions, none of which will be popular or comfortable, but which are urgently needed. We must prepare for years of instability, but we need to protect our citizens. Our way of life remains the best answer to aggressive dogmas. So it is not a surprise it will continue to be target for those who fear our way of life. It is imperative for us to demonstrate that our foundations are stronger than propaganda, stronger than actions and that stronger than actions aimed at destroying the pillars of our peace projects after the horrible events of World War II. We have to keep 
this in mind when we are dealing with our own challenges in the European Union. For example, Greek debt crisis or negotiation over the EU reforms. We should try to make sure they will not lead to the slow erosion and weakening for, of our European project. The stakes are too high. I am convinced we can succeed of, in our efforts. Our society can resist these challenges and it is the best place for people seeking peace, freedom and prosperity. They will be ready protected because it will be worth it. But we will be able to do so only if we do not accept the game of undermining our values. If we do not let ourselves to be trapped in our own indifference, inconsistency, and indecisiveness. Thank you for your attention. President Kieskos, thank you so much for such an inspirational kickoff to the day. It's very fashionable for people to bemoan the lack of leadership in Europe, and I'm always very skeptical of this because being old enough to remember some previous generations of leaders, I'm not sure that they were um, as particularly popular at the time either. But I think what you've shown is that it's possible from uh, a Slovak point of view to have really important thoughts, not just about the very difficult foreign policy uh, position we're in, but also uh, these uh, very important domestic questions. And remembering the refugees who left Czechoslovakia after 68 and the welcome that they got, I think it's particularly good to have a, um, a, a Slovak leader now highlighting the moral dimension that I think particularly for Central European countries that don't have a reputation or a, a, a tradition of accepting migrants, um, but do have a history of having had to be migrants in the toughest possible circumstances. So thank you very much for that.